Hello everyone and welcome to Northern Solar. Things are a little bit different this month and doing this one as a live stream. I haven't had time to uh, record anything um, previously but I wanted to give you an update as quick as possible. So let's see how this one goes. Hopefully everything's working technically. Some of you may have noticed that I did actually accidentally go live yesterday. I definitely wasn't ready to do that but it's uh, all set up now hopefully and uh, if anyone is watching then uh, do let me know on the uh, chat if you can hear me okay uh, and if you can see the screen so far and um, so yeah this one i'll just be a uh, run through of the statistics that as normal but we'll just go through it live and uh, see how this goes um overall compared to recording it and editing it back and everything and um, yeah i guess the upside is you don't have to sit looking at my uh, face while we go through all of this um, so yeah, firstly, um, obviously now we're into autumn, things look a little bit differently. So let's look at the um, production graph for October. Uh, yeah, as you can see, up and down. Oh, I'm just going to wait. I think my uh, stream's been delayed, so I'll just wait till that uh, clicks over. Yeah, there we go. So up and down massively throughout the month, depending on whether we had terrible weather or great weather. But as you can see, uh, some pretty decent days over well, 17 and a half, getting towards 20 kilowatt hours in a day. And then, yeah, some pretty shabby days down here and one absolutely awful day. Honestly, dark days like this are uh, pretty depressing when it comes to solar producing. As you can see there, the lowest day of the month was 1.67 kilowatt hours. And I might need to double check <laughs> nothing went wrong that day, but I can't believe how low that was. But yeah, so now we see here a nice high day at around 19, averaging at 11.8 um, with a total of 336 kilowatt hours produced in October. Um, I'll show another slide now that I think, I don't know, seems to have disappeared. Let me see if I can get another slide up. Hang on a second. Uh, that's, uh, oh yeah, that seems to have disappeared. Let me see if I can find it. Let's see if I can find it somewhere else on the computer. Oh, there it goes. Uh, here we go. Let's have a look. Yep, this is what happens when you do it live. You think you've got everything lined up properly, and it's not there. There we go. That should be it. Wow, well, yeah, that's not the right size at all. <laughs> uh, there it is. So you can see now, yeah, there we go. October compared to September, a little bit lower than you might expect. Um, but I, as you can see, yeah, 336 is quite significantly lower than September and yeah, really coming into, uh, into autumn now with a bang. Um, Although realistically, you probably are following the right amount, the right sort of curve as you might expect coming down towards winter. This is the first couple of days of November because we've had those already in the graph, but hopefully it'll get a little higher than that before the end of the month. Uh, right, so obviously everyone's interested in um, costs and everything like that, so let's move on to the costing slide. I'll just wait to see if that changes over. Just wait for the stream there. There we go. So yeah, we generated uh, 336 units in October. Uh, of that, we exported 188 to the grid, which means we managed to consume 178 kilowatt hours of our production. We used quite a lot from the grid this month, 320 kilowatt hours from the grid. Um, but as you can see, again, almost all of that is from the off-peak consumption, which is car charging. And this month, towards the end of October, as the weather uh, got a little worse, we did actually start charging the battery overnight, uh, the home battery, that is, not the car battery, to add um, some extra charge to make sure we had enough in the morning. It was probably a little bit uh, cautious doing that. We'd very rarely uh, got low on the battery, but it was interesting to see uh, how that looked overnight with the charging. And I'm going to show you another graph um, to, to go through that as well towards the end of the video. Um, yeah, so as you can see, the export is 51% and consumed 48%. Uh, 
But if you break that down into our usage, 35.7% uh, of our whole usage came from solar, um, with 62% from the off-grid at the peak, uh, the off-peak grid, and 1.65% from the peak of the grid. So yeah, keeping our uh, peak usage down to an absolute minimum as usual, um, which uh, really helps with the cost because our off-peak cost is very low. So uh, obviously financials, everyone's always interested in that one. So yeah, standing charge of £14.68. Our total grid usage cost for the month of October was £26.87, which brings our total electricity cost for the month of £41.53 with a total export earnings of £7.71. Um, looking at what that would cost, our electricity usage would cost without solar. We were looking at an estimate of £155.97. So monthly savings a little bit lower than last month, but £122.15. And um, so let me bring up our next slide, which is the month to month across the time we've had our solar panels so far. So let's wait for that to come live on the stream. There we go. So yeah, as you can see, I've updated this a little bit to show our peak and off-peak grid usage compared to the solar. So it might look a little bit different compared to if you're used to watching these videos in previous months. But yeah, uh, now putting the figures up in there, um, I actually added another bit to this spreadsheet which shows how much we actually put into the car via the PodPoint app. Um, I might go back and fill in the previous months with that, but it's sometimes during the summer we were charging off the three pin granny plug, so it's hard to judge exactly how much went into the car. Um, but yeah, 292 units to charge the car, and then you can see our off grid usage of 19.5 outside of the car charging. So that includes overnight occasionally using a dishwasher if the battery's not charging, they're not doing it at that point. Um, but yeah, a little bit of charge added in on a few uh, overnight sessions towards the end of October, put 19.5 in there. Uh, so again, yeah, the monthly savings are starting to come down a little bit because we're not able to generate as much from the solar. But you can see £122.15 is still pretty good. Uh, and then it's, here you can see our totals, uh, if you're interested, over the year. Um, similar to it was, it hasn't really affected it too much this month. It's, Broadly the same as it has been, consuming about 45% and exporting 55%. We do expect that to change quite massively over the next couple of months, with uh, November probably going to be very low on the exports, um, so we'll be consuming a lot higher percentage of it. Um, so yeah, as you can see, grand total so far in the seven months now we've had the solar panels installed here, we've so saved £940.64. So yeah, as always, we try and answer the question, uh, are solar panels worth it? And again, it's still, even at this time of year, we're not not saving as much, but yeah, without a doubt, still saving massively. So for sure, solar panels are worth it for us. So as promised, I was going to show you another graph, which is, um, this one is gonna be about our sort of average day of the week, uh, 24 hours, showing you how our um, system responds and what we do charging wise and grid usage. So it's starting from like midnight, the whole battery is taking care of the very minimal sort of overnight usage you have. Then our off-peak window opens at 2.30 in the morning on Octopus. And you can see this large part here is us charging the car. And I believe also on this day we were charging the home battery, the grow lot battery as well. So you can see here we've got um, up to about nine kilowatts. So that would be seven kilowatts from the pod point charger and the additional above that would be the home battery and that sort of tails down as they start to get full and then by half past four roughly in the morning that's all fully charged um, and then we're using the grid um, here because we leave the window open for charging the battery till 6 30. Um, so there's no usage of the battery the battery doesn't drain until 6 30. So we've got another little spike here, which I believe is the dishwasher or the washing machine, which are time to come on overnight in the off-peak. And then as we start to um, lose it, we get out of the off-peak, so at 6.30 we go back to using the battery. These blue spikes now are battery usage. So you can see that probably kettle going on in the morning. Sometimes you get a little bit of a lag first thing when the battery wakes up to uh, deal with that spike. So our battery can do about 3.3 kilowatts um, of draw. 
So occasionally you get a little minor grid spike um, when you've got something large coming on. But as you can see, the rest of the day, uh, we have a little electric heater that we use. So these um, spikes here are around two kilowatts. The battery's covering those no problem. Uh, this one, maybe it's the washing machine. I'm not always in during the day. Um, my wife is the one that's in uh, works from home. So she uses whatever she needs during the day. Green here is the tiny, tiny bit of solar we had during this day. As you can see, it's not a lot. Um, a little spike in the afternoon, but generally the battery and the solar between them are covering the load of the house. Um, actually, what you might see here is the battery then becomes full again because we start getting blue spikes. So while the sun is shining, here we are actually exporting to the grid even at this time of year. Um, so you can actually see if you look at this little section here, you get 1.7 kilowatt hours exported to the grid. So some people might be saying, well, you shouldn't have charged your battery so much. Um, you should have left a bit of space at the top and then you can charge the, uh, rather than export to the grid. And there is some merit to that, to be honest. We, we could say, let's just charge the battery up to 90% in the evening, um, uh, sorry, in the overnight peak. And then we can allow the um, sun to top that up when we need to. But at the moment, it's hard to judge when the, when the weather's going to be good or you're going to have a bad few days. So what we're um, really hoping to achieve is just really not have a situation where the battery runs out. And if it means that we lose out a little bit um, by our exports, because we only get paid about 4.2 pence for our export currently, and it costs us 7.5 pence per unit to charge the battery. But when you're looking at one unit here and there, it's really not worth um, giving too much thought to it. Uh, yeah, so moving on after the sun sort of goes down this time of the year, you can see there's no PV, no green, green graph later on in the day. So the battery again is covering all the usage. Um, we must have probably eaten out or had something very snacky or something for dinner this day because there doesn't look to be any cooking going on. And then in the evening again we've got this electric heater that we use um, that just comes on, keeps the room warm enough that we're, if we're in the lounge or, or whatever we can have the electric heater on rather than using the gas central heating. And it actually doesn't use that much electricity. I was surprised how little it takes to uh, keep that lounge warm. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for um, our average sort of usage. I'll try and get another one as we go um, into into November and they'll probably be a little bit different because I imagine the heating will be on more often, we'll get even less solar generation and we'll probably have to put more charge into the battery. Um, well yeah I think that's pretty much it really. I don't want to go on too long with this thing. Um, got dinner to make this evening and uh, plans and all the stuff to get on with so as ever we, um, I always love answering questions if people have got them. Um, drop them in the comments, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I often get asked about the spreadsheet that I made, um, that's back on this slide. Um, that is available to download, I'll put a link in the description once I've finished the video. It's in the link for all the other videos on the channel, so you can download your own copy of that and play around with it and see what the, uh, the numbers do when if you want to put your own figures in there. Um, I'm always updating it month to month with new new metrics and things and um, I am trying to figure out a better way of inputting uh, how much influence the battery is having on the situation. I had a few questions about that from a couple of uh, viewers that are interested more in how the battery affects the system but hopefully I've answered a bit of that question today um, with the um, with the other graph um, and then yeah I often get questions about like why I don't have a bigger battery and I shouldn't be shouldn't want to export so much electricity um, which is true, yeah. Um, ideally, you'd have a huge battery and never have to export anything at all and you save it all up whenever you need it. But batteries are really expensive. Um, if you have a huge battery that you don't really use for 90% of the year, it's pretty wasteful, really. And it, take, it would take a long time to recover the cost of buying a battery. Um, and in general, yeah, we're going to be exporting a lot throughout the summer um, and that will taper off through the winter. And then our next plan is to use more of what we actually generate in the house. So getting things like a, an immersion heater controller when we get a hot water tank put into the house next year will help us use a lot more of what we generate. Uh, and again, this winter we'll use the electric heaters in the house a lot more often because we have the battery power uh, rather than using the gas central heating um, just to heat the whole house where we don't necessarily need to. Uh, but yeah, as ever, uh, any more questions that anyone's got would be more than happy to answer them. Um, and yeah, hopefully next month I'll be back to doing a normal video, but we'll see how we get on. This one seems to have been quite easy to produce and quick to uh, get out the door. So maybe I'll do a bit more like this. So I'll try and incorporate a 
a bit more webcam and maybe look at some live uh, figures of what's going on on various apps if I can figure out how to get all this uh, technology talking to each other and um, and everything on the screen at the right time. But yeah, thanks very much for listening, everyone. And I uh, hope you have a lovely weekend and we'll catch you next month. Thanks a lot. Bye.